Welcome to another of my reports on the major stuff happening at the ICMA Expo in Milan. And in this video, I'm going to be covering some of the smaller Italian manufacturers. In no particular order, I think I'll start with Fantic, a manufacturer that has been around since the late 1960s when it was making enduro bikes. And then it became better known for fast mopeds during the 1970s. The last couple of years has seen new life breathed into the company and a new range of enduro and MX bikes form the backbone of the manufacturer. Although expansion into road bikes of the scrambling persuasion has started to prompt fresh interest in the brand from those of us like me who are road bias bikers. The Caballero 500 in particular has prompted me to get in touch with the company to organize some test bikes for next year when I will be revisiting Italy in the more biking friendly summer months, even though as yet there is no official importer for Fantic in South Africa, which seems a bit of an omission to be honest. The Caballero 500 Scrambler then is currently the undoubted star of the Ranger. Sweet looking package that apparently rides as nicely as it looks. Good build quality, decent components, a modestly powered single cylinder engine from Chinese manufacturer Zongshen and an Italian built chassis mean an affordable, simple yet undeniably stylish model that has done wonders for the company sales as it expands into new markets. On the back of that success, the big news for Fantic in Milan was the unveiling of the Caballero 700 featuring a parallel twin cylinder motor. And not just any old parallel twin either. This one comes from Yamaha and you will know it as the CP2 unit, the heart and soul of the MT-07 in its sister models. And rather than dumbing down the engine for this role, Fantic has actually upped the tech. And so this 75 horsepower engine now has three riding modes, cornering ABS and traction control. And it comes with a three and a half inch TFT display with phone connectivity. There's a lightweight chrome molly steel frame, an alley swing arm, Martsocchi suspension, a 19 inch front wheel with a 330 millimeter single Brembo disc, and it is claimed to have a weight, and I don't know if this is ready to ride or empty of all liquids, of just 180 kilos. This is a big step up in the tech stakes for Fantic, but it's a good looking bike and as long as the pricing doesn't get out of hand, this could be another major milestone in the growth of the company. Moto Marini then is another Italian brand with a storied history that fell on hard times but was revived in 2009. Significantly, it was then bought in 2018 by Chinese giant Zongshen. Yes, the same Zongshen supplying the engine for Fantix Caballero 500. 2019's edition of ICMA saw the first concept versions of the Sei Mezzo. The 6.5 is powered by a 649cc parallel twin with just over 60 horsepower. Well, that bike in its two versions, one a scrambler and one more road oriented, was on proud display at ICMA given that in the past couple of months it finally made it from concept to dealer showrooms and is apparently already selling pretty well. These two models followed on the heels of the first Zongshen inspired model that was the XK, or Cross Cape, a 649cc adventure style model that made something of a splash at uh, last year's ICMA. Well, on the back of that and as something of an attempt, I think, to gauge the public's reaction, there was a ADVR, Adventure R version of that middleweight soft roader that was more of a rally inspired model with greater off-road potential with fully adjustable suspension, switchable ABS, a lot more crash protection and a TFT screen. If the feedback is good, then Moto Marini could have something in production as early as the end of next year. The smaller and middleweight segment of the adventure bike market, all right mate, how you doing? Uh, it's seeing so much activity from brands like these and indeed from MV Augusta as well in the not too distant future I would have thought with its own 550cc model largely because of the success of another Italian model from Benelli. The TRK 502 is Italy's best selling large capacity bike. Yes, okay we'll go for a walk shortly mate. 
Right, Benelli is another Italian manufacturer with a glorious past, but it is in fact also a Chinese concern because it has been under the control of QJ Motors since 2005. Um, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope the audience is going to find my words as interesting as you apparently do. Uh, you've been so quiet for a couple of days, mate. What's wrong? Right, apologies to our audience. Um, having some Italian style and uh, brand awareness to go with your Chinese engineering and economies of scale is undoubtedly a potent mix, as the TRK502 adventure models have so successfully demonstrated. ICMA saw some minor tweaks announced for those bikes, and the TRK800 was shown once again after it deservedly made a, a really big splash at last year's ICMA. But disappointingly, the 800 has still not made it to dealers just yet. 2023 will apparently be the year though. There was, however, plenty of other eye-catching stuff happening on the Benelli stand with a new Tornado 500 street model featuring the same parallel twin as the smaller adventure models with 47 horsepower and 46 newton meters. There's a tubular steel frame, fat 50 millimeter upside down fork legs with radial brake calipers and 320 millimeter discs at the front. There's a slipper clutch and on the electronic side of things, we have a five inch TFT screen with the obligatory smartphone connection, which is a decent feature to be fair on a budget, smaller middleweight bike like this. Decent features then, but the main talking point is obviously the styling that gives the bike a, a lot of angles and a very distinctive face thanks to a headlight assembly that looks like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. I'm all for efforts being made to make bikes stand apart from the crowd, so I'm a fan, as I am of the bike's look as a whole. Keeping those lights clean in the middle of a, a horrible European winter could be a pain, but nobody said looking cool and different was ever going to be easy. The Benelli styling assault didn't end there though, because they had two new quarter litre models that also looked a damn sight more interesting than most road bikes of this capacity usually do. Once again, a quirky headlight arrangement sets the tone, but the BKX250S naked is outdone in the looks department by its BKX250 adventure styled sibling that in place of the S's 17 inch wheel sports a 19 inch at the front with a 17 inch on the rear. And they both have spoked rims as well as some fetching bodywork that really sets it apart in a world of cheap but dull small capacity models. Both versions sport a 250cc single cylinder engine, good for 25 horsepower at just over 9,000 RPM. And they should, in theory, arrive in Benelli dealers by somewhere in the middle of next year. At the other end of the cost scale when it comes to small Italian manufacturers is Bimota. And last year's Eichmer celebrated its takeover by Kawasaki with a Taisy model powered by the supercharged H2 motor from its new Japanese parent company. This year, we had a somewhat unexpected model in the shape of a BX450 dirt bike that is, well, it's basically a bimotification of Kawasaki's KX450X. Bimota has added lights, handguards, uh, a larger fuel tank, and basically fitted an arrow exhaust. Along with the new dirt bike though, on Bimota stand that was itself in a corner of Kawasaki's own stand, they had on display a chassis that will apparently be the basis for a new sport touring bike that will in fact be a first for the Italian brand that until now has been all about pure sport bikes. This model will be called the Terra, or Tira will it be maybe? And it uses the Ninja H2 SX engine, a new swing arm and this all new steering system that truth be told might well make more sense for a larger heavier sport touring kind of role. And to end this look at some of the cool stuff coming from the Italian manufacturers, how about this beast? Don rode one of Italjet's funky scooters on the program recently and, well, he loved it. I think he'd like this one a bit more because it has a much more useful 43 horsepower from its 450cc single cylinder engine. Yes, the 500GP is a concept at the moment, though all being well, it is planned for production in 2024, but who knows whether the six-speed gearbox will make it that far, or the underslung exhaust, or the monster Brembo brakes, but I really, really hope this concept isn't diluted too much because I've always wanted a handy little scooter at home, and 
this is my kind of little and definitely my kind of handy. Make it Italjet and they will definitely come. That's it for this Eichmere report. Check out our other videos on what was new in Milan. And if you're feeling generous, please consider giving us a thumbs up or maybe even a subscription. We really do appreciate your help in our ongoing battle with the mysterious YouTube algorithm that rules our world in such mysterious ways. Thanks and hopefully see you in the next one.